The question going into the Cotto Rodriguez fight is how much does Miguel Cotto have left? Cotto is an all time great fighter. By beating Shane Mosley, Zab Judah, and everyone else he's defeated throughout his career, he's going to go down as one of the all time greats. Rodriguez is perceived as a good but not great fighter. So if Cotto is the Cotto that we know, he should come out on top in this scenario. But if Rodriguez should win somehow, it will be viewed that Cotto is no longer capable of competing at the elite level. Cotto had a rough fight with Antonio Margarito in 2008. This is the fight where a lot of people thought that Margarito had plaster in his gloves. He took a really hard beating. And it was one of those fights where it looked like the prime was beat just right out of him in that one fight alone. In his very next fight, he had a very rough, tough, physical fight with Joshua Clotty. And then right after that, he was knocked out by Manny Pacquiao. And it was at that point when a lot of people thought he was pretty much done. But then he went on to stop an undefeated Yuri Foreman. He beat Mayorga. He got revenge on Antonio Margarito, but when you put those victories into perspective, Foreman elected not to continue against Paul Wolak in his very next fight. Mayorga was at the end of his career, and Margarito was more or less blind in one eye when they fought. So it was hard to really put those victories into perspective, but what really validated the Miguel Cotto comeback was the effort he showed against Floyd Mayweather, who's perceived as the best fighter in the world. He gave Floyd the toughest fight he's had in a long time, one of the toughest fights of his career. And that really showed that he had something left to give. But in his very next fight, which was his last fight, he looked flat and listless against Austin Trout, who may very well go on to become a great fighter. So the question now is, what does Miguel Cotto have left? Has he spent it all? Has he gone to the well as much as he can possibly go and that's it? This fight is going to let us know. For Cotto to win this fight, he's going to have to establish his jab and disrupt the rhythm of Delvin Rodriguez. Rodriguez is a mover. He's a boxer, and Cotto is going to have to slow him down and disrupt that rhythm with his jab, which he always does against every fast boxer who he faces. He just destroys him with the jab, and he's going to have to land his trademark left hook to the body and break him down from the bottom up. For Rodriguez to win this fight, he's going to have to keep the fight in the middle of the ring, fight a complete fight, and box throughout the night consistently. Everybody knows what they have to do in this fight. It's can they do it? I would give, in this scenario, Miguel Cotto the benefit of the doubt. I don't think he is at his absolute best. I don't think he's at his prime. But I think that he can beat someone on the level of a Delvin Rodriguez who has come up short against top 10, top 15 fighters in the past. I don't think that Cotto is going to look sensational. I think the fight is going to go the distance. And it will lead to a more meaningful fight against someone like a Canelo Alvarez, where I think he's going to have a much harder time. But against someone like Rodriguez, I believe at this point he's taking his career seriously still. He's giving it one more run. He's with Freddie Roach, which we'll see what kind of difference that makes. I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference at this point. But he believes in himself enough, and Cotto has proven that he's one of the most resilient fighters of the modern era. So even though he's not at his best, it's hard to go against him in this scenario. But should he come up short, then we'll know that the story is over. And should he come out on top, then he will march on and we'll see where he goes from there.